Carrie. And I'm Rad, and welcome to Melbourne. Now, of course, at some point we are going to talk about that Mario movie trailer, but our big news, Pax Oz is back. back. It's my first time at Pax and it's safe to say I already love it. You definitely wore the wrong shoes for this though. Boots. Boots. If you've never been, PAX Oz is a three-day celebration of gaming that happens every year here in Nam at the end of Melbourne International Games Week. And on top of all the panels, game demos and publisher booths, I reckon the best thing about it is its community. And it's not just me. Hey, I'm Harry from ABC Gamer and I'm here at PAX to ask people what they love most about PAX. You! What do you love most about PAX? Oh, I mean like the people. Look at everyone. They're all dressed up. Yeah. We all use that take. What do you like most about PAX? The fact that it's the biggest convention that we have in Australia. Princess Peach, what do you love most about PAX? It makes people, everyone happy. I love checking out all of the art and the merch and buying you know, everything from everywhere. I just love it because it's a gaming convention and it's something I just love. It's a convention about the things you love, games and cosplay. Now I'm here with Bruce Wayne. Oh, I'm Batman. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Hey Kai, what do you love most about PAX? Oh, probably just like the people. I think it's just really awesome, the sense of community that's here. Everyone's so lovely and kind and energetic and I really, really can't wait to kind of experience what today brings. Being able to meet new people, make new friends. Yes, and I feel like, like can we say that we're friends? Yeah. I'm here, I'm here with Jerry Hawkins, one of the creators of PAX. And can you tell us why, why should people come to PAX? There isn't really anything else like it. Yes. I mean, that, that by itself, if you would like to go to something that simply doesn't exist anywhere else. <laughs> it's like a novelty. Jake, as a developer, what do you love most about PAX? I'm a huge extrovert, so just being able to talk to the people um, and see them play the game is really very fulfilling for me. I feel like it's my tribes here. Love tabletop, love video games. I like the cosplay. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I like seeing what everyone's wearing and hopefully get to see some cool like uh, gaming personalities and events. I love all the panels, including the sea shanty panel that was on last night. It was just fantastic. And how much did they raise? They raised just over 11 grand for Cure Cancer, which was fantastic. This is the Oz Indie Showcase, and there is a lot of great Australian work here. The show is about, a, is about half over now, Yeah. right? You're gonna spend the rest of this show finding things that you've never heard of, yeah. never seen before, and it's all from here. Yeah, we do it well down here. You know, Wi-Fi was invented Facts. in Australia, Facts. so we do yeah. all right, eh? Zach, what do you love most about PAX? No idea, I've never been before in my life. This is my first time and I just walked in the door. Oh, what are you most looking forward to then? I don't know, I have no idea what's here. You're wearing the red shirt like the guy from the WoW video. Is that inspiration or no? This is what was clean. Finish what this sentence. Leroy! Zach knows nothing about games. I don't know why we picked him. I like the ABC. That's why we picked him. I think most people still think gaming's super niche, but like you don't say movies are niche or like reading books are niche. It's just an activity and I feel like Gaming is for everybody. Some people don't have the attention span for reading, including me. But that is why I love things like PAX. It's so cool to come here or to little community meetups and see just how far reaching the silly little hobby is where we just press buttons and make things move on the screen and then they go boing. Brrr. Now here's some stats. Around 17 million Australians played some form of video game in 2021. 17 million. The population of Australia is only 25 million. I wonder who the other 8 million people are. Babies, or people that hate fun. Sure, it's a multi-billion dollar industry and it's growing every day. Like, it's as accessible as ever. And I don't know what the point I'm trying to make is, except that I'm super stoked and I think I love shared passion. I think it can be pretty daunting to have a crowd this big. I think there's 60,000 people here. But the cool thing is, when you all have the same thing and you all get to hang out, you meet some huge legends. Like, I got to meet the devs of Aussie indie games Tempopo and Gubbins and they were super lovely. I got to glean a little bit of insider info on the development of each of their games and as much as I'd love to share, they're real militant with their NDAs. What I can say is Tempopo is Lemmings meets Captain Toad and it's sick. And it's made by Witchbeam, who are the studio that did Unpacking too. Mm. And Gubbins is this really cool wordplay game that has some of the most beautiful illustrative graphics I have ever seen in a game. So make sure you keep watching Gamer over the next few weeks because we're going to show off some of these cool Aussie indies. Brad, it's just so good to be together after so long and talking and sharing, playing games. It just, it just rules. You know what doesn't rule? The Mario movie. Oh, it's a bit harsh, but 
It is real. The Mario movie is real. Nintendo dropped the trailer after a 35 minute long hold screen on a special Nintendo Direct. It was special because you had to wait 35 minutes, but visually Illumination did a fantastic job. The visual effects team are working overtime on those fire and snow particles, and there's plenty of fan service chucked right in there. For example, seeing a gigantic Mount Rushmore sculpture of Bowser's big fat head at the front of a ginormous floating ship was are pretty cool. Surprisingly, the worst part about the Mario movie is Mario. Mario is the worst part. They could have made the film without him. Yeah, they should have. Jack Black as Bowser looks and sounds great, and the silly penguins throwing snowballs are goofy as. <laughs> Keegan Michael Key brings to life Toad's shrill neuroticism, and it's all looking great, but just Mario, you know? Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. His voice just doesn't match his body like me when I was 12 to 24 years old. It, ju it just doesn't sound right. But then again, he had like four words of dialogue, so we'll just have to wait and see if it gets better or worse. So you're saying you reckon your voice fits your body now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other weird thing about the Nintendo Direct is that when Chris Pratt was talking about the movie, it sounded like he was being held hostage. Like, you remember that Barnaby Joyce run video of uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard being like, quarantine matters, it's really important. It was pretty much that. Uh, growing up, man, I spent hours of my life stomping Koopas. Jack Black absolutely crushed it as Bowser, and it's no surprise because he was Kung Fu Panda for like nine movies. And we don't know what Anya Taylor Joy will sound like as Peach. Uh, we got a blink and you'll miss a bit of Charlie Day as Luigi, but we don't really know, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. My final verdict visuals, incredible. Voice acting, pretty good except for Mario. Let's get out of the rain. Yep. Are you coming with? Now it's time for the segment where we share news too little to elaborate on, but too big to ignore. It's barely news. Yeah. Overwatch 2 launched on the 5th of October in Australia, so it's playable now, but it wasn't on launch day. In, in true, true Blizzard, Blizzard fashion, fashion, the launch was flubbed and the queue times were ridiculous. But who even cares? Because the single player stuff isn't even out yet. Bayonetta's original voice actor Helena Taylor is not returning for the series' third instalment, but it only counts for the English dub. So, barely news. You don't have to wait anymore for a Steam Deck. Valve are shipping units right after purchase. So, no more wait times, unless you live in Australia, in which case they're still unavailable. I guess we'll never have a Steam Deck in Australia, hey? Barely news. Need for Speed Unbound has been announced. It's coming out for Xbox, PlayStation, and PC on the 2nd of December. The trailer showed off a cool graffiti cell shaded look, which is awesome because Need for Speed wasn't really ever that serious, eh? Hey? Nah, it's just an excuse to rip around in supercharged cars with my good mate, ASAP Rocky. It's barely news. It's barely news. PAX has been so fun, Melbourne was great, but we lost Rad. Have you seen Rad? Let me know in the comments below because she has my computer. <laughs> Rad. How did you feel about the Mario movie trailer? Yeah, right. You can't wait to trample over that thing, eh? Hey? Chris Pratt as, as Mario. Can you give me a, what is this? <laughs> <laughs>